Man, it is super windy here today. I can definitely hear the wind sounds in here. Hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. Let's get right into it. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. External GPUs are something I touched on briefly last year when I looked at the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box when attached to a KB Lake powered ultra portable. In this video, and perhaps a couple more over the next few weeks, I wanted to revisit eGPUs and determine whether the latest laptop CPU hardware from Intel solved some of the problems we saw with the KB Lake and eGPU pairing last year. So as a quick recap, last time I tested the GTX 1070 gaming box attached to a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon over Thunderbolt 3. The gaming box does contain a fully fledged desktop GTX 1070 GPU, but the weak Core i5-7200U with just two cores and four threads presented a bit of a bottleneck in a number of games. The eGPU did transform the ThinkPad from a sleek ultra portable into a genuine gaming machine with decent enough performance, but the full power of the GTX 1070 wasn't unleashed by any stretch. In fact, the GTX 1070 eGPU plus Ultrabook combo was typically 30 to 50% slower than an actual GTX 1070 gaming laptop and could be up to 65% slower in really CPU limited titles. Stuttering was also a noticeable issue in some, but not all games I tested with, which contributed to weak 1% low frame rates. In most games, when comparing these crucial 1% low results, the GTX 1070 eGPU is actually a fair bit slower than a GTX 1060 gaming laptop. Again, a lot of this came down to the hard CPU bottleneck and also the bandwidth limitations of Thunderbolt 3. So in this eGPU revisit of sorts, I'm continuing my quest to find the ultimate portable gaming setup and upping the ante in several regards. Firstly, Gigabyte kindly swapped out our GTX 1070 gaming box for their newer and faster GTX 1080 gaming box. These eGPUs come with a graphic card installed and are supposed to retail for around 700 US, though, you know, with the current GPU shortage and price hikes, these boxes are pretty rare, but hopefully at some point soon, everything will calm down and these sort of boxes will become more available. The GTX 1080 gaming box, it is pretty similar to the GTX 1070 model in most regards, so I'm not going to talk about the design and build much because it's basically the same as what I discussed in my 1070 gaming box review. The key things to note is it's the same extremely compact size and it's still plug and play over Thunderbolt 3 and will charge your laptop in the process provided it supports USB power delivery. Secondly, and most importantly, I'm testing with new ultra portables that use Intel's 8th gen KB Lake refresh CPUs. With four cores, eight threads, and a more than 50% performance leap over the previous generation, there's hope that the new CPUs in these laptops will help deal with the CPU bottleneck we originally experienced. So the laptops I used are the HP Spectre X360 and the Razer Blade Stealth, both of which use the Core i7-8550U, the most commonly used high-end 8th gen laptop CPU. Both have four lanes of PCIe over Thunderbolt 3, unlike some laptops that have just two lanes, and both have 16 gig of RAM. The Spectre X360 is configured to use the default 15 watt TDP for this CPU and is a bit thermally constrained at times, you'd say. The Razer Blade Stealth is also a 15 watt laptop but manages to sustain better clock speeds around 200 to 300 megahertz higher across the board. Also, it's important to point out I tested everything using an external 1080p display hooked up to the GPU display outputs on the GTX 1080. Performance is noticeably reduced when sending the display signal back to the laptop's display and I wanted to avoid any such slowdowns. Also, I recommend anyone using an external GPU to use an external display for this reason. So let's get into the results starting with Grand Theft Auto V. This is a game that played reasonably well with the old eGPU setup, achieving 36 FPS in 1% lows. However, the faster GPU and CPU with this new setup does help out here. Average frame rates are up by 23%, but crucially 1% lows have improved by 38%. The performance doesn't match a proper GTX 1080 gaming system here, though we are getting 1070 Max-Q like frame rates. We haven't tested a lot with Batman Arkham Knight, but it's back for this round of testing. The old eGPU setup couldn't run the game at maximum detail levels, however we are now seeing those 1% lows for above 30 FPS. Again, 1% low performance from this ultra portable plus eGPU combo is around the level of the 1070 Max-Q. 
Rise of the Tomb Raider is a punishing game at its maximum detail levels, but again we see this new eGPU take it to a playable level where previously 1% lows were sub 20 FPS. Performance here is actually really good from this heavily GPU limited game, essentially matching the GTX 1080 Max-Q, if a little bit slower. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is a rare title that doesn't benefit significantly from the extra CPU or GPU power. While average frame rates do improve by 22%, 1 percent lows jump up by just 10%, which leads to performance between the 1060 and 1070 Max-Q. A bit of a disappointing result for the eGPU combo in this title. The next couple of games are heavily demanding on the CPU, so they could be quite interesting. Hitman benefits strongly from the quad-core power of the Core i7-8550U, pushing 50% more frames than the older eGPU combo, looking at the 1% low result. The CPU limitation still gives proper gaming laptops a significant advantage. The GTX 1060, for example, pulls ahead in 1% lows despite falling behind in average frame rates. However, this combo does make the game playable at max settings for the first time. Civilization VI sees gains of more than 50% in both average and 1% low frame rates thanks to the faster CPU, bringing the 1% low frame rate above 30 FPS for the first time. Again, performance isn't quite as good as some GTX 1060 laptops we've tested, but it's still very playable. Watch Dogs 2, it's a visually beautiful game, but like a lot of Ubisoft games, it tends to push the CPU and GPU very hard. Here we're once again seeing a 50% improvement to 1% low frame rates, and these frame rates push above 30 FPS just for the first time. Still, we are limited to around GTX 1060 performance here. Mass Effect Andromeda runs really well on the GTX 1080 plus i7 8550U combo, doubling the 1% low frame rate we saw last time with the older eGPU combo. This allows the system to outperform the GTX 1070 Max-Q by a good 15%, though it can't reach the 1080 Max-Q. Prey is one of the best performing games on gaming laptops, but it does struggle massively with the 15 watt CPUs we used with the eGPU here. While 1% low frame rates again are almost double what we achieved with the older eGPU combo, performance is still below the level of a GTX 1060, which is typical of the more CPU limited titles we've tested so far. Middle Earth Shadow of War is the final game we'll be looking at today, and this game did come out after we tested the older eGPU combo, so unfortunately we don't have data for that system. What I can tell you is the GTX 1080 eGPU plus i7 8550U records similar performance to the GTX 1070 Max-Q and delivers perfectly playable performance at 1080p with the ultra quality preset. Overall, results are very interesting for this new eGPU plus ultra portable combination. With the GTX 1080 and Core i7-8550U in hand, across the games we tested there was a 61% performance improvement on average compared to the GTX 1070 and Core i5-7200U combo we looked at earlier. A lot of games that were previously unplayable at maximum settings are now playable, plus stuttering was less of an issue as evidenced by far more titles with 1% lows above 30 FPS. This is also a much larger gain than we'd normally see when comparing the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070. With a typical desktop or laptop system with the same CPU, the GTX 1080 is only 20-30% to faster than the GTX 1070, but here we're seeing more like a 60% gain on average. It's quite clear that the additional CPU power helps to improve performance in a significant way, and those with older dual-core laptops won't necessarily be able to achieve large performance gains simply by pumping in more GPU power. While results are really good for the most part, and every game we tested with is very playable at high quality settings at 1080p or even higher resolutions, we still aren't seeing the full power of the GTX 1080 unleashed with this eGPU setup. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, the 15 watt Core i7 8550 is still relatively weak among faster 45 watt gaming laptops and of course even more powerful desktop CPUs. The move from 2 to 4 cores at 15 watts does alleviate some of the CPU bottleneck enough to see great performance gains, but these sort of ultra portable plus eGPU setups are unfortunately still CPU bottleneck for the most part. 
And secondly, the Thunderbolt 3 interface still doesn't deliver quite enough bandwidth to the GPU. Even with a four-lane Thunderbolt 3 setup providing PCIe 3.0 times 4, stuttering is present in some games that can't be attributed to extreme CPU loads or memory allocation issues. Granted, the number of games that stutter is less with the faster ultra-portable CPU, but a game like The Witcher 3, which we tested with last time, still experiences performance hitches when the CPU is only at 60% load and memory allocation is well below the limits of the system. It is possible that this is a latency issue rather than a bandwidth issue, though either way I'm confident it's related to the Thunderbolt 3 interface which makes it a hard problem to solve by simply throwing in more CPU power. The end result is the GTX 1080 gaming box hooked up to a Core i7-8550U laptop provides performance most similar to a GTX 1070 Max-Q, particularly in more GPU heavy games. Across the tiles we tested, the eGPU combo was 4% slower than a GTX 1070 Max-Q laptop with the Core i7-7700HQ inside. It's also 7% faster than a GTX 1060 laptop on average, which is great news for 1080p gaming. However, the GTX 1080 eGPU paired with the current Gen 15 watt CPU ends up 24% slower on average than the GTX 1080 Max-Q, and that's not even a fully-fledged GTX 1080. So if you're thinking of buying the GTX 1080 gaming box or a similar eGPU to use with an ultra-portable laptop, don't expect to get GTX 1080 performance. Instead, you'll be throwing a lot of extra GPU power at what is essentially a CPU-limited system. Don't let the performance difference take away from what is still a great setup for gaming though. Thanks to external GPUs, you can carry around a thin and light gaming laptop for productivity on the go, then return home to a desk where you just plug in one cable to unleash very respectable gaming performance. You know, GTX 1070 Max-Q performance is certainly no slouch. It's not as good as a proper gaming laptop or desktop just yet, but there's a bright future for this sort of technology as some of the early issues get ironed out. I do have a couple of other eGPU gaming tests coming up, so stay tuned for those and a big shout out to Gigabyte for sending over the GTX 1080 gaming box. Sorry guys, it's taken so long for us to look at this in depth, but I do think eGPUs are a really interesting product segment right now. Anyway, that's enough. I hope the wind noise wasn't too bad and I'll catch you next time.